ensure that your behaviors reflect the values that should be identified with these student athletes. Assume responsibility for your behavior and the behavior of those around you. And now for hockey to the non-starters. Number zero, Lily Morningstar. Welcome to the Mass Mutual Center here in Springfield. We have an exciting matchup here today as your Hopkinton Hillers are in the MIAA Division II State Championship game here, facing a somewhat familiar foe in the Foxborough Warriors. Hi, I'm Tim Haladic, normally here with my partner Steve Spector, but unfortunately Steve cannot make it. So actually we're having a family affair here today. My, my dad, uh, Jeff, will be taking over as the color analyst for us here today. So something to look forward to here today. But uh, Jeff, obviously we see both teams very talented making it here to the state uh, title game, but they have met twice before. Uh, Foxborough with, a, I think, about a 12-point victory in Foxborough 
in December in Hopkinton, uh, taking the second game in Hopkinton by one. So what do you think we're going to see here today in this third one? Well, <clears throat> I need to catch my breath, Tim, because uh, I just ran across the street from about a mile away to get into this building. But uh, We uh, made it, though. Yes, we did make it. Uh, looking at the, the team as you got it out there now, it looks like Hoftington has a height advantage to start. Right, and they're going to need to use that. Uh, Ivy Goglin, 1,000-point scorer, fresh off that, as Hopkinton forces the turnover. And Regan Caveney, who's really turned it on over the past month or so, especially since Lily Morningstar, uh, their spitfire of a guard, went down with a torn ACL a couple of games ago. True, in the uh, game against Groton Dunstable, I believe it was, she played a very strong game. I was able to see that one. It's right, still 0-0 zero, zero here after a missed shot from Marissa Prawl. Shot just rims out from Grace Tamulionis. Now Hopkinton controls. Caveney drives and kicks it back out. Corby fakes a three. Could have been a travel. Nice move. No call. Floater. No good. Rebound goes to Foxborough. It's hard because you hear the other guy talking for the Foxborough <laughs> <That's> broadcast. <right. laughs> I don't think he can hear you, though. And a carry. carry. Turnover there goes against Foxborough. Number three, Lily Sykes. Yeah, Lily Sykes, a, a talented player, had a, a huge, huge impact in both of the games against Hopkinton earlier this year. We'll see what she can do in this final. But again, it's going to be a different, a different outlook um, without Lily Morningstar. She's arguably one of the best on-ball defenders in the TVL and almost definitely on this Hopkinton team as Kate nice Hubner, a tough drive, misses the shot, and Ivy Goglin crashes the board, forces a jump ball. This jump one stays ball. with the Hillers. Yeah, nice uh, effort on the rebound there. Oh, looked like a, a great travel. play. Lily Sykes traveled just before the uh, jump ball. Yeah, and a turnover either way for the Hillers. Right. Still a 0 0 game, two minutes into this first quarter. Timmy, you're not usually this high above court side, huh? No, it's it's a bit, it's definitely different. <laughs> Takes a bit of adjusting, but we'll get there as a foul is called down low on the pass. At 23, Ashley Sampson has a nice, nice handle going there. Yeah, Kelly Corby picks up her first. Still no score, 5.55 in. Just, just outside the free throw line, the jumper knocked down. Abigail Hassman, first points of the game. Nice play. And then a steal. Caitlin Mollica takes the ball away for Foxborough. Hoppington in man to man. Foxborough working the ball around, a three launched off the back rim. Tamulionis gets, tries to get her own offensive rebound. Hopkinton takes control. Caveney took an extra step of travel. Too bad for her, she knocked down the three, but another turnover here for the Hillers. A couple ones uh, for both teams here to start early in this one. Yeah, I'd say nerves are probably playing into this a little bit. Yeah, it always takes, you typically takes a few minutes for teams to kind of work out the kinks, so to speak, but still only a, a 2 nothing lead for Foxborough, about three minutes into this one. Pace of play doesn't seem to be that fast, though. Nice play there. Kate Hubner on the ground, taking the ball away. A loose ball is kicked ball. out of bounds. Looks like off the feet of Hassman. Hopkinton will take over. 4.53 left here in this first quarter. And uh, the so again, this being the third third game between Hopkinton and Foxborough, not very common. Typically, and I spoke with Coach uh, Mike Greco um, a couple of days ago. 
and he was ta we were talking about how it's a nice shot there from Cave, and he knocks it down. We were talking about how it's it's not very often you play even a TVL team three times in a year, and they're playing Foxborough here this time for the third time this year. But he also said that um, ultimately it doesn't matter. Um, he doesn't have any preference as far as who we'd like to play. A great block down there by yeah. Caveney. Nice play. And we've seen it here so far to start as the Hiller girls seem ready to take this rubber match. You don't play anyone three times unless it's Medway and you play him four times. Right, right. <laughs> Turnover taken away to Mulionis. Now Sykes knifing her way nice through dribble. the defense, takes the contact on the floor. That one going against Kate Hubner, the senior. Second team foul. Foxborough ball at the top of the key. Still plenty of time to get a decent shot off. Sykes takes the shot. Or excuse me, Malika. Nice box out. Malika with the shot. She misses. Corby almost loses control, but manages to regain composure. Hopkinton still up three to two. Hubner gets through the lane. Shot a bit off the mark. Rebound goes to Foxborough. Nice move to get to the lane, but she just didn't finish. Sampson takes the contact, just a bit short on the shot, but Malika with the offensive rebound. Now Sykes, a deep three, Eight. hits nothing except her own teammate. Two on now Hudner comes up with a loose ball and throws it up to Prawl. Caveney Again. launches the deep three, <laughs> knocks it down. Regan Caveney. She's unconscious. Six points already for Hopkinton. And she would have had nine if it wasn't for that Right, travel. for that travel. After having 24 against uh, Northampton in the previous game, Regan, again, has stepped up. This team needed another score, but especially since Lily went down, she's really stepped up production. What a way to end a career. Yep, the senior captain doing everything she can to end her career with a state title as Hopkinton comes away with another rebound. And Corby fouled on the pass. That one looks like it's going against Malika. The first team foul. <laughs> and Olivia Gladu enters the game for the first time for Marissa Prawl. Again, Prawl, Corby, and Gladu's roles have been highlighted, especially since that injury to Morningstar. And Gladu steps right out there and Whoa. launches a three. Big Olivia shot. Gladu. What a way to come in off the bench. And she's a sophomore, Tim? Yep, that is correct. Yeah, what a way to come into a game. And apparently one of those shots was a two, so Hopkinton with eight points right now. Oh. Either way, uh, an 8-0 run for Hopkinton. Deep shot from Foxborough, no good. Rebounded, goes to Foxborough, an offensive rebound. Nice Samson, the nice drive, gets nice right drive. by the Hopkinton defender and knocks it in. Ashley Samson, the senior guard, Got a good Got a handle helper. to her, like you said, Jeff, yeah. and she showed it right there. Hopkins can go with a three guard offense. Hubner open for three. Nice. She knocks it down. Kate Hubner, the three is working nice. for Hopkinton. And a timeout call to by Foxborough as Hopkinton, we think, will take an 11 6 lead, assuming that yes. two point correction was right. 127 left here in the first quarter. They have and oh, there it is up on the board now. 11 there six. we are. And it seems like Hopkinton has shaken off those early early stutters, early um, nerves, so to speak. Well, I think they've only taken maybe six or seven shots, and, and most of them have been uh, the threes, and the threes are going down for them. Right, and Hopkinton um, broadcasting their games all year. Three-point shooting has not been a particular strength for this team. They lost... Uh, Julia Canastrari from last year's team, who was who was their long distance uh, sniper, but really in this game, Regan Caveney again already hitting two, and then Marissa Prawl has improved her shooting tremendously from last season to this one. And Kate Huber, not typically a three-point shooter herself, but left wide open, she knocked it down. And the long ball is working for Hopkinton right now, who now has 13 points according to the scoreboard. <laughs> what happened there? Uh, 
Something's going on. We don't have a stats guy with us, but I don't know what happened there. I don't know if even the stats guy could explain it right yeah. now. I only remember them making four shots. Well, at any rate, we'll try to get that squared that away for you. Whatever. Now it's 12. Okay, so, so that Kaveny three. three was was a three. So she's got nine And points. they had given an extra bucket to Foxborough. Okay, I, th I thought that was off as well. So 12 to four right now after all is said and done. You know, it's interesting. They don't have Kaveny having nine points up on the big scoreboard there. They have her with six. And they have uh, number five with two. Hmm, that's weird. I thought she yeah, took Gladue, three shots. Yeah, Gladue did have a three. She did have a three, right. So I don't think we can trust that. No, we can't. <laughs> Plus they have six points over for uh, Foxborough. So let's that's not right, look at yep. that anymore. <laughs> so, and then meanwhile, Foxborough steps on the baseline, turning it over. Kate Hubner takes a seat for the first time this game. Again, uh, last year's team fell to Medfield in the sectional final. And uh, losing key components from that team, including Emma Lakasha. Oh, she traveled. Uh, Ledoux <laughs> had an open shot, wasn't sure what yeah. she wanted to do, took an extra step. It looks like Foxborough's daring Hoppington to take threes. Hoppington's not expecting to take them, and then they do. And that time, I think she right, got a little bit mixed she up. Was, I, I think she was surprised. She was yes, so wide open. Wide open. open. They're, they're really packing the zone, maybe for the two big girls. Yeah, for Gogolin. Uh, <clears throat> Hopkins' offense flows almost entirely through Goglin, although right now she hasn't really even touched the ball. I don't think there she's hasn't, had a There touch. hasn't really been any reason for her. Nice, nice block. block from Caveney from behind. Nice and block. And then stepping on the baseline was Foxborough. Abigail Hassman turns it over for Foxborough. Great defensive sequence for the Hillers. Great block by Caveney. Prawl gets it in to Goglin. Good play from Goglin to come back to that one. Under a minute left here in this first quarter. Still 12-4 lead for Hopkinson. Very fast moving first quarter. Nice pass. Ball inside to Gladu. That space erased quickly. Caveney inside to Goglin. A tough look. Forcing that one to Goglin. A turnover for Hopkinson. Nice idea, but it was a tough pass. Because if she caught it, she could have turned right to the basket and gone in for a layup. 27 seconds on the clock, on the game clock. Shot clock is turned off. Referees discussing something right now. In lieu of a, a replay, I think they weren't sure if it went off of uh, Gogolin or not. Well, at any rate, hot, uh, Foxborough will have, will take over. Again, 20, 22 seconds and counting right now. No shot clock. Foxborough can take the last shot if they choose. Foxborough moving the ball around, trying to get something. Holding for that last shot. Shot from Malika, deep three, no good. Rebound to Caveney, three seconds left. She's looking, Not can't quite time. get the shot off. Or she did, but it was partially blocked by Sampson. But at the end of that first quarter, after the initial uh, flurry of turnovers, Hopkinton taking a 12-4 lead. Jeff, I mean, we, we talked about the three ball, but what, uh, what, do you th what have you seen here out there from Hopkinton? Well, they're playing man-to-man -man for the most part, and uh, Foxborough seems to be just passing the ball around the, the zone, the top of the key, just looking right. for open. And then they've occasionally gone in for a, a drive, but when they go in for the drive, it's been well contested by the, uh, by the two big girls on, underneath. I'm not that good with the names. Yeah, Gogolin and Caven. I will, get, I will, Kaven, yeah, yeah. I will get better with the names. Um, but that's what it looks to me like they're doing. And then... Um, Looks to me like Foxborough is packing it in on the defense and leaving almost daring Hoppington to make three pointers. And they have made them. Right. And they, they have made a few so far. Olivia Gladue, Kate Hubner, Regan Caveney have all knocked down at least one three pointer, despite what that scoreboard, scoreboard says, says. Right. Yes. <laughs> scoreboard's uh, still wrong. It still says uh, Foxborough yeah, Fox has, has six. six. Points, but yeah. um, the actual numerical scoreboard that tells us uh, what the game score, 12 to four, that is correct yes. right now. As we start the second quarter, Foxborough trots out onto the court. Um, not a uh, typical Foxborough quarter for them. Uh, not a typical Foxborough quarter. Um, they were the one seed in the south bracket and kind of cruised right through, running into a, a tougher opponent, I think, this time in Hopkinton. 
Hopkins is definitely battle tested, that's for sure. A three fired from Foxborough, knocked down. Tamulionis brings Foxborough within five. Nice shot just off the top right of the key. And despite the way we've been talking, it seems like a, a huge Hopkinton lead. It does. But still, uh, now Foxborough within five after Two that Two possession three. game. Goglin working Huebner inside hard. to nice play. Nice play. Nice pass. A tough, nice a tough look. Probably almost was stolen, but Goglin, once she got it, went right up to the hoop. Knocked it down. 14-7 now. Oh. Caveney got caught a little bit out of position there and tried to make up for it. Yep, she picks up the blocking foul. Her first foul. Third. The, fan, team foul. the fans are still pouring in. They must have been stuck in that <laughs> parking garage, too. Yeah, that was. <laughs> and it wasn't fun. No. <laughs> and that looked like a travel there. Could have been called. It sure did. But at any rate, Hopkins. Ah, Foxborough keeps possession. Sampson driving baseline. Great defense from nice. Hopkinton. Loose ball. Sampson somehow nice gets it play. back, but Hubner getting in the passing lane picks it off. Marissa Prawl looking for help. They could feel a three coming. Yeah. They've all, all backed in under that three point line. Caveney tried to get into Goglin. Nice. Somehow Goglin nice and effort. one. The senior captain, Ivy Goglin, fresh off 1,000 points for her career. She gets the and one. It's a tough pass. Again, Hopkinton sometimes a bit too aggressive trying to feed Gogol in the ball, but she managed to grab that one, took the contact, and knocked it down. That was a nice finish. Good catch, good finish. A nice and one, the old-fashioned and one converted by Gogol. I haven't seen her play that much, but she looks a lot fresher than she did in the game that I did see. Turnover. And the Hopkinton defense forcing another turnover, a travel. They went in on a 3-1 press, three-man press there, and uh, Locked Cut. that girl up in the corner. Yeah, caught Malika off guard, the freshman. Getting a lot of minutes, pretty much every minute here for Foxborough. Nice. And Gogolin nice again inside, fouled again. Ivy Gogolin, the first quarter, we barely mentioned her name. And now that's, I believe it's the only name we've said so right. far. Three possessions in a row, but I'll go on to her. Maybe four. Another foul shot coming up. Goglin's nice first touch. free throw is good. Her sixth point. Second one upcoming for the senior. And she nice. knocks it down. Three for three. The UNH Wildcat, she will be after this season, doing everything she can to end her Hopkinton career with a state title, her and Regan Caveney. Both senior captains have been nope. through a lot with this program. That's a, that should be Hopkins. And another ball. turnover yep. as that ball's booted by, I believe, Tamulionis. Interesting how Hopkinton, with a 12 point lead, went into a press and really kind of caught Foxborough off guard two times in a row. Hubner with it now up top. Pass oh, yeah. stolen away by foul, Sampson. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good And call. then another foul hurts the second on Caveney. That could be big because she plays the whole game. Six minutes left in the half. Yeah, 19 7 lead for Hopkinton. It's tough for Caveney to pick up that foul, but a, but a good foul would have been an easy bucket for Foxborough. You know, sometimes the the point is is uh, better to give up than the foul, though. Right. Especially on one of your stars. Malika, the deep three, just a bit strong, knocked oh. out of bounds, Got fighting a bit for of a break it. There was Gogolin and Hassman, and referee Stern in his call says it's yeah. a Hopkinson ball. Looked like it went off of Gogolin to me, but that's a that's good for them. Good for Hopkinson. Now Foxborough's in a press now. Yeah, Foxborough taking the page from Hopkinton. Although it's a man-to-man. -man Goglin is fouled, though. Tamulionis a bit too aggressive, although Goglin might have been bailed out because it was a it was a tough play. Good play by her coming back to the ball, though. All the other two girl the other two girls were kind of <laughs> covered. 
pretty well. And I just want to mention Lily Morningstar doing her part, grabbing that ball. See, didn't seem to have any problem walking to pick that one up. Good to see her um, in good spirits. Corby spins off her defender. Foxborough still in a man-to-man -man now. Caveney over to Corby. Hubner now. She drives, takes it. Nice, nice dish off to Gogolin. Nice and Gogolin knocks down the jumper. Big smile from Kate Hubner. She knows she just made a great play. 21 7 lead for. Gogolin's having a great quarter. A nice hook from Tamulionis. No good. Offensive rebound to Hassman. And she knocks it down. Great play by Hassman getting in there to grab that rebound. Looked like it was going to be Hopkinton's ball. 21-9 Hopkinton lead now with just under five minutes left here in this first half. And for, from the Hillish perspective, not much more you can ask for here to start. No. Good ball movement back and forth. Looking, not looking for the three, but, but getting the threes. Now they're trying to pound it's, it inside. Hubner gets inside, takes some contact. No good, nice but Caveney gets in there. Offensive rebound. Now Gogolin, <laughs> another offensive board. And Foxborough cannot handle the bigs of Hopkinton, Gogolin and Caveney on that particular possession. Two offensive rebounds and Gogolin will shoot two. Two offensive rebounds and another team foul. That's right. So that's five with 4.36 to go. Gogolin's money from the line, four in a row. Uh, you are right, though. Your note about Gogolin, she does look a bit fresher. She looks a lot uh, fresher. <laughs> she um, really, Hopkinton, use, I'd like to see her usage rate. I don't think we have those for, for high school athletes, but it, it would have to be some, something astronomical because she was the, the focal point of this Hopkinton offense. Now she seems she's got some rest and is ready to go. The T3 from Malika hits off the front rim and falls in a deep, deep three. Gogolin's also leading the press, too, so she looks very fresh. Coming back to help every time, too. 23 to 12, Hopkinton now. It's kind of like token pressure that Foxborough's putting on them, though. They're, they're right. there at the, at the pass-in, and then they kind of disappear, fall back into their zone. Not their zone, the man-to-man. -man. And Corby, a tough look there to Gogolin. That's a three fouls on number 21. A foul two. called. Foxborough very frustrated with that. I imagine she's one of their better players. Three fouls is going to really hurt. Yeah, Tamulionis, the senior, three fouls, again, within eight, 12 minutes of game time. Not a great start for Foxborough. Caveney, nice drive, a bit tough, a bit hard off the backboard. She can't come up with it. Now Malika with it for Foxborough. She's racing down the court. It's hard to tell from up here and without any stats on, on the heights of all the, all the young ladies, but uh, Hopkinton is really destroying them on the boards. Sampson, another front rimmer bouncing in for Foxborough. The nice move by Sampson to clear out some space. Nine point lead for the Hillers, 320 left here in this first half. Pass inside to Gogolin again. Might have tried to force that one. That was a bit telegraphed, and Foxborough knew it was coming. Now Hopkinton getting a bit predictable offensively. A nice drive from Sykes and a great pass. A nice pass again down low. This bounce doesn't go in for Foxborough, but Sykes an offensive rebound. Kate Hubner hitting the deck, fighting for the ball. Looks like Sykes got hit in the head. She's a bit slow to get up. Foxborough's got a lot of uh, funny bounces off of that basket to our right. Yes, they have. Most of them have gone their way, too. Yeah, the last, the last two shots in particular, front rimming and somehow going in. And then on that rebound there. Now Sykes has it at the top of the key. She drives, nice take, blocked nice by Gogolin. Play. And a tough call there, looked like a clean block. I think she might have got her with the body Yeah, go, she doesn't look too uh, displeased with the call. But Again, without the benefit of, of instant replay, you have to really focus. I, I thought she might have fouled her. Sykes, the senior, will be shooting too. A chance to bring this to a seven point deficit. You know, Fox Pro's come back 
in this game, and it doesn't really look like they're on a run, but they're back to eight points without really going on a run. That's a tough thing to handle. Nice rebound. One of two on that trip for Sykes. Rebound goes to Hopkinton. 2.30 left here in the first half. 23-15 advantage for the Hillers. This might be a big uh, possession right here for Hopkinton. Hubner pass inside to Caveney. Somehow gets through. Caveney kicks nice. out to Gogolin. Very and nice. she is wide open. Lily Sykes thought about challenging that. Uh, good decision not to. Gogolin with the easy lay-in. We may need to remember that Malika one. Malika side sidesteps, launches the three. Goglin fighting for the rebound, she can't get it. Malika again a deep three, straight up. Not a good bounce that time, but another offensive rebound yeah. for Foxborough. Now it's, the baseline jumper, no good. Not, this time Goglin really grabs effort. that. <laughs> it's really not from the Hopkinton's effort. They were right there, they were just not they're, they're, getting uh, it. The bounces are just going in the worst possible places they are. for Hopkinton. That's hard to say when you're up by 10. Another substitution. But I, I jump all at the end result. Goglin fighting with several Foxborough uh, Warriors stays with Hopkinton. And Caveney hit with a travel. Hopkinton seems to be relying on Ivy coming back every time to get the ball in. Eventually, Foxborough's going to cut that off. They've got to get to the two guards on the side. Hopkinton with not quite as much bounce over these past few minutes. A deep three from Sykes. They seem to take a lot of threes. They do, but another offensive rebound for Hassman. Now Malika drives. Great challenge from Gogolin, but Malika scoops it over the much taller Gogolin. And a pass wow. picked off from Sykes. A bad look from Prawl. Oh, they got a break there. Lucky for Hopkinton, though. Ball goes out of bounds off of Foxborough. A tough. Not a great play there from Hopkinton, telegraphing that pass right into the hands of Foxborough. I know you don't like to use your timeouts, but I think Hopkinton kind of needs one right now. Ooh, almost a foul there right on Lily Sykes. If Corby sold that, I'm sure she probably could have got the call. Gladue drives uh, right there. A, a charge called as Gladue. She might have been inside that circle, but... It was ve very close to the hoop. Her feet were planted. But she, again, very close to the hoop. It, but a foul call nonetheless, 25-17. Just about a minute left here in this first half. Foxborough has to feel good about having it under 10. Corby, good defense on Sampson. She has to give it up. Ball is an over and back. And half court violation. Good defense there from the Hillers forcing another Foxborough turnover. Now I think Hoppington really has to get a, have a good possession again here. You want to try to go up by 10 at halftime. That fictitious number, turnover though. And another so kind of sloppy turnover there. Hoppington has not been playing with the same intensity that they were to start this game. Past several minutes have not been great. Malika, pass inside. Block nice from behind, by Gogolin, and she gives it out to Gladue. Shot clock is off. Hopkinton has a chance to lengthen this lead. Up eight, 15 seconds left now. Again, shot clock is off. Gladue forces the issue. Prawl, an open lane. Her layup nice up and in. Great play from Gladue and Prawl. The composure of sophomore Olivia Gladue as Hassman launches the deep three. Excuse me, Sampson, that is no good. Caveney grabs the rebound. And at the end of the first half, Hopkins and Hillers halfway to a state championship. Don't want to talk too soon, but going into the halftime break, up 27-17. And Jeff, we were talking about uh, Foxborough did come back a little bit without going on a run. But what do you think the Hillers are going to have to do coming well, up here in the second half? Well, I think as fresh as we thought Ivy Goldwyn was the first five minutes of that second quarter, at the end there, I thought both her and um, Caveney. Caveney. Uh, they looked a bit gassed. They got, they got yeah. gassed, yeah. Um, and, and Foxborough kept throwing shots up and getting rebounds off of funky bounces, but they were still getting them. Right. Um, 
I, I thought they were a little bit winded there. I'm sure he doesn't want to, coach doesn't want to take either either of them out because of their value to the team. But, uh, you know, when you're up by 10, you can kind of sneak a minute in and save, save some time later on in the game. Um, they may have to do that in the second half. Right, right. Not knowing enough about Foxborough, they seem to have a deeper bench. They, they have um, substituted a little bit more freely than Hopkinton has. And, and they and seem to be a little bit fresher. And they have that ability to knock down the three ball, as we've seen. They haven't been too successful, but uh, with teams that rely on the three-pointer, they can erase a big deficit pretty quickly. Um, but at any rate, we will see what happens uh, in the second half here. Hopkinton, again, a 27-17 lead. We'll be back here in a few moments. We hope you join us for the second half. My name is Kurt. My name is Nina. I'm Gunny. I'm Haley. Hi, my name is Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al My Gal and we love H Camp. Hey, I want to be a camp. We love H Camp. And I volunteer for H Camp TV. And I watch H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. We love H Camp TV. All right, we are back here at the Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Again, Tim Haladic here with Jeff Haladic. Unfortunately, <laughs> Steve Spector could not be here with us, but Dad, you're doing a great yeah, job I'm filling trying. in. I'm trying. Uh, Hopkinton with a 27 to 17 lead, and there were a bit, a couple different stories through this game. Hopkinton with a fast start, um, really in the first quarter, hitting a bunch of three pointers. Uh, Foxborough came back a bit, and then in the second quarter was the Ivy Goglin show early. But later, Foxborough, again, still down 10, but kept that kept it uh, within striking range, a very important, assuming they can get any type of run here in the third quarter. But, uh, Jeff, what is Hopkinton going to have to do to make sure that doesn't happen? I think Hopkinton has to go back to doing what they were doing in the first quarter um, defensively. They're, they were very strong defensively. In the second quarter, uh, Foxborough got too many open looks in the lane, too many kind of freaky bounces for rebounds but they had two or three people in the lane going after the rebounds and they made they made a lot of them um Hopkinton has the, the two big girls underneath that they don't seem to be able to match up against but I don't think the bounces are going to continue to go that way <laughs> they have to level off but when you get when you're not getting the bounces and you're still ahead by 10 that's a pretty good problem to have <clears throat> Looks like they're starting off a man-to-man -man with a little bit of pressure. Yeah, and Foxborough will inbound the ball. Right Again, in front of us. Down 10, 27-17, Hopkinton lead. Ivy Goglin with 13 points, leading the way for Hopkinton. And Sim Sampson will start with the uh, ball, sharing duties for Foxborough. Her pass inside would have been a great start for Foxborough but a miss corralled by Ivy Gogolin. Nice pass, nice play, they didn't finish. You can see from this angle that Ivy Gogolin has a big advantage over number 22, Abigail Hassman in the, in the post. Longer arms. He does, arms. and now had a chance to get her the ball cave, and he drives a floater nice. halfway in, somehow rattles out. Now Sampson with, with it for Foxborough. Molica, or Sykes, excuse me, open for a deep three. She knocks it down. Seems Wide like Foxborough specifically seeks out the deeper shot. Knocks they it down on to. that one. Hubner looking for help, gets it in Prawl. I did find out at halftime that that Sampson girl is going to Adelphi University. So she is a player. So college talent all around in this game. Hopkinton wanting to get it to Goglin, but Foxborough knows. Looks like they're trying to force it. Goglin <laughs> shot no good. Sampson takes it, and Caveney, a foul, her third. Something to monitor going forward, picking up her third foul early here in the third quarter. Smart move by Sampson. She lowered her shoulder, and Caveney was not set, so they were going to call that every time. But offensively for Hopkinton, uh, it's very clear. Ivy is just trying to clear out whoever she's on, and they're trying to feed her to the ball, and right now that really hasn't been working. Yeah, the ball got stuck that last time. 
that we'll see. The first quarter, their offense looked a lot more free-flowing. We'll see if they try to go back to that or continue to force-feed Ivy. Corby handles the one-man press effectively. Right off the bat, this, this uh, possession looks a lot better than the last two. Gavin, he drives, kicks it over. Hubner, she drives. Some contact, but nothing called. Ball goes out of bounds. Yeah, and despite the shot, though, it looked good to see the Hiller girls actually moving around instead of just relying on a pass inside to Ivy. Better good. offense. Good possession. <clears throat> but they need a good defensive possession here. Right, up five now. Foxborough has already knocked off five points off that lead. Good defense and a travel. Great, great defense, on ball defense from Callie Corby. Forces that travel, that uh, turnover there from Foxborough. Yeah, they squeezed her right in the lane, made nice play. Corby gets it along the baseline. Now Cavity trying, not looking for anything else, only trying to get it into Ivy, and that kind of makes the rest of the offense stagnant. Prawl for three. Off the backboard, oh, maybe it's a tricky rim. bounce. Goglin almost grabs the offensive board. And it could be that rim. It could be that rim, yeah. Foxborough, an open two-pointer, knocks it down to Ulionis. And 27-24 in that lead, all but gone for Hopkinton. And the timeout called by Coach Greco with 519 left here in this third quarter. Not a great start in the second half. This has to be what Hoppington feared and what Foxborough hoped for, but it unfolded right before our eyes so quickly. Right. Now they're on a run. And this Hopkinton team has enough talent around. They don't have to feed Ivy the ball constantly, but it looks like in that third quarter they've done that exclusively. The first two times for sure. And these last couple, it looked a little better. But that might be what they're being told to do because she does have a distinct advantage on, on uh, the Samson girl or the Hassman girl. Well, we'll see what Coach Greco tells his team after the timeout. Uh, what they have been doing hasn't been working. A, seven, a quick 7-0 run for Foxborough. And now they're right back in the game. Definitely not what you want to do if you're Hopkinton. Give away that double-digit advantage you had. The uh, Silver Line, though, they are still ahead, still ahead by three points. Still plenty of time for them to get back in a groove. But we'll see with Coach Greco what the message is. Gone almost three minutes without a score. <laughs> Hubner will inbound from the sideline. They get it into Gogolin's hands early. Better ball movement. Cave and he has the ball picked away and diving on the floor. Jump ball. Was Ashley Sampson. Cave and he forces a jump ball. Foxborough possession. Yeah, Foxborough will take over. Great play from Sampson. Tough break there but for Hopkinton. The arrow shows Foxborough, doesn't it? Maybe they already switched it Maybe. after. Usually they wait till it goes in. Yeah, typically. And a smart play from Koglin almost gave up, but Hubner picked from behind, and the wheels are starting to fall off a bit for Hopkinton. That's a double Malika, dribble. That was a double dribble. Yeah. He, he said the Hopkinton tipped it, but she did not. Goglin, nice rebound. great rebound, though. Two hands grabbed it, secured it. But a missed call there almost bit Hopkinton. Hopkinton needs a basket badly here, and then they need to go back into that press. Pass inside to Goglin again. Got, I, they got a little bit uh, of a break there. A, she was uh, double team. Easily anticipated pass there, but Goglin was ma uh, managed to grab it and was fouled in the process. Caveney a three. Bit short. First outside shot we see from Hopkinton in several minutes after that hugely successful first quarter. 
Corby, uh, that was a tough call right that there. That is a very tough call. It looked like Corby got in front, just that ref was ready to call a foul, and Corby picks up. Sampson's smart, though. She, she puts her shoulder down, draws the contact, and seems to get the call. Hubner, good defense on Sykes. Great team defense in the lane there. Corby, again, great defense up front. Great challenge from Callie Corby. They need that type of defense, oh, but Sykes man. takes it right away, and Prawl gives it away to Sykes, <laughs> and now it's a 27-26 lead. Oh. And Hubner almost gives it away. Tries to get the pass inside to Gogol, and she didn't have uh, anywhere to go with it. Tipped out of bounds. Now Gladu will come back out onto the court. Pass inside to Hubner. Caveney gets good open good. for a three. Good screen, no good on the shot. That was a good possession. That, that was their best shot in, in the entire quarter, I would say. Unfortunately, did not fall. Hopkinton still up one with 3.20 left here in this third quarter. Have not scored yet. Meanwhile, giving up nine to Foxborough. They want the ball in Sampson's hands all the time, it appears. But Corby doing a good job keeping her in front. Caveney, good help on that good drive. Help. A deep three, no good. Goglin Should be Hoppington ball. Fighting with Hassman. Hassman tips it out of bounds. Have to withstand this run. They need to get a point, a basket here soon. If it flips to them getting behind, it could be trouble. Right, we'll see. Hoppington has held on to the lead to this point. They still have not scored in this quarter. 2.55 left. Corby looking for help. Gets by Sykes. No one else moving offensively for Hopkinton. Ledoux gives it to Hubner. Nice take from Hubner. Yeah. The, the path opened up. And two nice free throws there. coming for Hubner. These are must makes, I think, here. They've got to break the ice. They here. need at least one <clears> point. They have to this. get a point. 242 left in the third quarter. And yeah. Hubner knocks down that free throw. Got off that 27, finally. Hubner's second free throw. Short, oh, nice rebound. but Goglin oh, fighting for that rebound with Fox, Sykes. Foxborough ball. Good play from Sykes to fight the uh, bigger Goglin and take that away. But as, as far as the uh, Kate Hubner play there, she has kind of taken over that bulldog role that Michaela Pucci had last year. And they're going to need some plays from her. We just lost it. Moving forward, uh, especially plays like that one where she drew the foul there. They're going to need that type of grit in order to pull this one out. We'll see what she can provide throughout the stretch here. I don't hear him. Driving is Sampson, no good. She gets her own rebound, throws up a wild shot, and somehow Hopkinton comes away with it. Oh. But again, Hopkinton very, playing a bit of hot potato with these passes after the initial rebound. Kate Hubner takes it all the way, can't finish. Now Sykes likes open for, Sykes open for a three, excuse me. But Olivia Gladue have, picks up the charge. I don't have sound. A great play from the sophomore. A great defensive sequence there, or great defensive play by Gladu. Still hanging on to the lead. Fox and Row backing under two off minutes the press left now. in the third quarter. Hopkinton somehow, amazingly, still with a two-point lead, being outscored nine to one here in this quarter. Pass inside to Goglin. She's she is fouled. Okay. Looked like the ref was calling an offensive on that one. Now Marissa Prawl will come in for Hubner. The senior will take a short break, I assume. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Good to have you. Thank God for Duracell. 
Uh, hey, no. no free advertising. <laughs> and a travel called on Hopkinton. Both teams look a bit stunned as far as that one, but the call is made. Another turnover for the Hillers. 145 left, two point lead for Hopkinton. Got a little helter skelter there for a while. Hopkinton's been able to maintain the Three lead. Three from Sampson, no good. Rebound goes to Corby. Hate to keep saying, but another big possession if they can keep ahead. Pass back to Corby. She, be in was, good shape. she was open from deep, but she turns it over. Pass picked away by Malika. Malika drives, no good, but the rebound to Hassman. Loose oh, ball loose on the ball. ground. Gladue picks it up, the sophomore in the right place. And now Hopkinton with a bit more space than usual. Caveney open nice for shot. three. Big Knocks shot. it down, Big Regan Caveney, a huge three. Puts Hopkinton up by five, the senior captain. Huge uh, shot by Caveney. Might be her first point since the first quarter, but important all the same, a deep three. Now Sykes nice knifing cover. through the lane. Goglin nice. down low, what a block, nice Ivy Goglin. And Callie Corby, it looked like looked she kind of like gave up on ball. that. I'm a bit confused as to what happened there, but. Looked like she could have got it before it got out of bounds. But a great block from Ivy Goglin, an absolutely monster of an effort. She did it right too, she basically kept it in bounds, but it just kept filtering out. The three, a quick three by Samson, I believe the shot clock for, was going down. Hold for one shot here, go in with a five or a seven or an eight point lead. The shot would clock be huge. Is, yep, shot yep. clock is off under 20 seconds now. It would wipe out everything that Foxborough did in that quarter. Right, which would be uh, enormous for Hopkinton. Oh. Ooh, that, that did not look like a charge to me, but I thought foul goes against Hopkinton. I thought got away with the um, travel before they did, the yeah. foul, I thought. <laughs> she did take a, an extra step there, but so at any rate, Hopkinton does eventually so turn it over. So the effect is the same thing, it's right. Foxborough ball. 10 seconds, it's hard to get it up court for a good shot in 10 seconds. Well, Although this she just <laughs> <laughs> made me look bad. Right, the shot oh, no big. good for Hassman. Ashley Sampson drove all the way down the court, yeah. did make you look a little. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't know what I was <laughs> talking about. Exactly, she got down there in plenty of time and dished it off to Hassman. She could not hit the shot. And Hopkinton somehow, some way, a 31-26 lead after three quarters. And Jeff, that third quarter was anything but pretty for Hopkinton. That was, you know, it's hard to say when you make it this far, but that was a, a rather poor third quarter. Some of it obviously is Foxborough playing better. They came out with a little bit more drive. But I thought that um, Hopkinton kind of played into Foxborough's they, hands they a did. little it bit seemed there. Like, yep. They, they stopped doing the things that they were doing well. It's easy to say from up here because you can see the whole court, but the ball got stuck on the right side over here. They were trying to force it into to Gogolin at the, those first two or three possessions, probably w what they wanted to do. I mean, it does look like they have an advantage there, but if they're gonna double down on her, she's gotta kick it out. But if they're not looking for the kick out, right. like and, they were in the first Ivy, quarter when they great, had all those threes And Ivy's there. a great player, but she, she's but not But everybody has adapted and played a different right. style of game right here. And uh, Foxborough's gone after their strengths. And That's right. We'll see what Your happens turn. here in the fourth quarter. 31-26 lead. This is it. Hopkinton will start with the ball. Yep, these first few minutes will go a long way to seeing how the end of this one shakes out, obviously. But Hopkinton, if they can get a double-digit lead, Gogolin takes it, saves it, and somehow scoots it over to Caveney. She was not ready for that. Off Caveney's foot, a turnover. Gogolin had space on that one, but it disappeared very quickly. She did her best to save the ball, but a turnover for the Hillers. This Lily Sykes uh, plays the whole game too, it looks like. Right, her and the freshman Malika have been out there as a three is knocked down. Hassman. That's a big shot right there and it didn't really come off of a set play. It was just like they threw the ball in all of a sudden she was open.
Ball oh, inside double. to Goglin, tipped away again. Double team. It's it's one <laughs> thing if um, Ivy has that individual matchup, which she does, but Foxborough seems to know that's what they're going for. And like you said, they seem to be playing into the Warriors' they, hand. It looks like they're letting them go one on one at the beginning, and then, and then bringing sending the, someone bringing over to help in. Goglin nice shot though; she shot too quick for the double team to nice get shot. over that time. Shot trickled in again. A friendly roll from that uh, hoop to our right here. Yes. A nice take from Sampson. She could not finish it though. Now Hopkinton on a bit of a break. Hubner hoping for three. She's not a deadly knockdown shooter. It's a wise decision to pull that one out. Yeah, they didn't have anybody underneath for a possible rebound either. Oh, Caveney had a great cut, was open. That's but nice now Corby one. steps in, Big the shot. open jumper. Great play from Callie Corby. Foxborough's sending somebody out long off of, after a made shot. Hopkins has got to be careful with that. 21 was wide open on the right wing. You can tell Sampson wants to take over. Hassman takes it, dishes it over to her open teammate. She drove to the hoop for the shot, no good. Wow, great defense there from Hubner. Did not respond to the fake from Sight from Light. Sykes, excuse me. And a deep three, no good. Big Huebner grabs the possession. rebound. Six minutes to go. And four seniors, five seniors out there right now, actually. I believe four Hopkinton. And they wouldn't have it any other way. Prawl the three. Oh, trickles man. up and That's doesn't nice quite shot. fall down. Prawl Looked like a travel they got away with, number 21. A three from Foxborough, knocked down to Mulionis. She's obviously a good shooter, but that wasn't really a good shot. 35-32, Hopkinton lead, 5.20 left in this fourth quarter. This is when you really got to suck it up and it's your last game, give it everything you got. Now Hassman. Sampson with it, she takes it all the way. Her layup up and in, no hesitation there. She's taking it all the way. Hoppington did not get back that time at all. Hubner puts her head down, nice drives, move. gets nice the layup move. up and in, the senior. Puts her head down and gets to the rack. That was kind of a stagnant set there, but she it made was. a great move. But Hubner saved them. Corby. This girl's tough. A tough cover there on Sampson. I think Sampson's going to have the ball every time, and, and she's going to look to make to make a score every time. Or or at least facilitate the for the team, whoever. It will be in her, her hands. See the teams coming in for the next game. Right. Yeah, they've been they've been sitting behind the uh, hoop for a little while. Not quite sure what team that no, is. No, I don't know. As the free throw, or is a 37, 35, 36 Six lead game. now after the free throw. Timeout called. 4:32 left here in this fourth quarter, and that's a good timeout because yeah. they they needed one. They've got I think three left after that adjust right there. I I think it's three, but. You, you, you don't take them home with you, and they, they're a little bit winded right now. The, the bigs are a little bit winded. Right, and uh, rightfully so. Uh, they've been out there, I believe, the, the whole okay. time. Yep. I don't think he has strayed very far from the bench of Prawl and Gladu. Right. And we'll you got to keep yeah. Caveney and, and Gogolin in there, though. You, they're Especially Caveney is a, is a great stretch four. She opens the floor up a lot. If they took her out, they would be easily yeah. able to pack it in on Ivy. But Caveney allowed that three-point shooting allows them to spread the floor. And she knocked one down earlier. As it is, they're packing it in anyway. Right. I believe that was a Foxborough timeout because it hasn't changed on the uh, Hoppington board yet. Foxborough looks a little fresher, though, don't they? They do. They do. We'll see if the uh, the boost from the Hopkinton crowd 
a nice round of applause there. They do travel very well. You can see well. a, a good fan section showing. Um, regardless of what sport, hockey games that I've covered, uh, they always pack the house, and it's no different here, about an hour and a half right, away from Hopkinton in Springfield. Oh. A turnover there for Hopkinton, a three from Tamulionis. That would have been a backbreaker for yes, Hopkinton, would have, would have put Foxborough ahead for the first time since 2 0. Oh, tough. That's, yeah. <clears throat> out of, just a little bit out of control that whole way. You could kind of see that happening. Marissa Prawl had lost the ball, wasn't looking up when she hit yeah. the defender. She and was a, just a tough, there. tough break there for Hopkinton. No now other call but the charge to make. They're back in the press, so this could help. This girl's a tough guard, though. Token, token pressure again for Hopkinton this time. But the goal is to make, the, make it as difficult as possible for Sampson. They want to get to her down low. Right Malika now. Sykes. They don't Five really seconds have a left plan on the here. shot clock. Sykes, not sure if she don't. knows. Somehow the lane opens up. And she gets the lay, and Foxborough takes its first lead. 29 since the seconds first quarter. of defense. And Kate Hubner forced to call the timeout. Not a good turn of events for Hopkinton right there. We'll see how they respond going down for the first time almost in the entire game. They played 29 seconds of defense there, and then on the last one, they just kind of opened up and left a wide open lane. All it takes is one second for Foxborough or any team to get a bucket, and Sykes took advantage there, giving Foxborough a 38 to 37 lead with 344 left, and then we have the timeout called by Hopkinson. Sykes is their leading scorer with 13. Yep, Tamulionis 11, and Sampson with 10. 10. Provided that's right. Right. But it can't be right because they don't have Cavani in the game. Right. Well, as Foxborough comes back out onto the court, Hopkinton not far behind. We'll see what happens in this final 344. Be interesting to see how Hopkinton plays from behind. They've, as you said, they've been ahead virtually the whole game. Will they go to try to feed the ball into Ivy again, or will they go for a more natural approach we'll see what coach greco talked about hopefully they can get the ball in before five seconds they do that time out of that timeout they just switched it to six fouls for hopkinton on team fouls out of now they switched it back to five <clears throat> maybe i shouldn't look at that <laughs> olivia gladue in the game she's made some big plays thus far she's open right now for three pass and get over to her quite in enough time that, that's a good call. that was a good, call. A good that call that was jumping in front of Gladue was Sykes and a bit too aggressive on that one. Foxborough not happy, but. Can't really complain about the refs. He's actually got all three or four of those charged. The, the bang bangs, yeah. For charged the most block parties. calls, correct, yep. I think. Home teams might not feel that, but from here it looked Objectively, right. you're trying to be objective. It looks like they've been right on most of them. Now, Hubner inside, now or trying a, to give it. They had a playoff of there to go to Ivy, but it didn't work. Now Ivy's got single coverage now. Gladue oh, taking she, it, she could have went. passes it for the three. Hubner, no good on the shot. Tough break. Gladue did have a chance for a layup, but got a, got a better shot there. Wide open three from Hubner. Unfortunately, did not fall down. Tough break there for Hopkins. It would have been a huge shot. Yeah, the inside out three is the best one. Sampson bringing it up slowly for Foxborough, calling out the play that she wants. Gets the screen. Corby so good man-to-man -man defense on her. Malika takes it down, the layup yeah. up and over. Gogolin, a three-point lead now for Foxborough. 40 to 37, 245 shot, left. Big possession again. Hubner gets it up top, takes the screen back to Caveney. That's the, the three. One. That's the one. Oh. Off the back rim. Another miss for Hawkinson. Rebound to Sampson. Six 
No, I just heard the guys say six. They have right. 10. No, they had 27. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I don't did know if you guys heard that, but they did start <laughs> this half with 27. 27 but points. still, a, a, good, a good point nonetheless. Hopkinton only with 10 points in the second yes. half, really falling off a cliff offensively, but still within three points of Foxborough. And Malika now with it for Foxborough. Just over two minutes left. Oh, and this one, Callie right Corby somehow gifted the steal right there. No numbers for Hopkinton. Oh, That's Hubner. Too, that too now Caveney for three. <laughs> no, but Corby with the <laughs> offensive rebound. Uh, Hubner would have been good, but that was an <laughs> NBA. Oh, three. Nice, nice move, move. from Hubner. <laughs> that would have been an NBA. Yeah, three. it would have been. <laughs> Caveney, I would have been okay with her shooting that, but yeah. at any rate, Caveney's three, no good. Callie Corby with the offensive board, and then Hubner with a great offensive move, but ball poked away right yeah, at three sets right of three point end. lines down there for us to look at. Right. Oh. oh, Caveney gets the ball slapped away, and it's a turnover for Hopkinton. That's a tough turnover there. 135 left now in this fourth quarter. Foxborough up 40 to 37. And a foul call. This one goes against Caveney. I believe that's her fourth, or that might be her fifth if we were to believe the scoreboard. Yes. A tough break for Regan Caveney. Looks like she's overcome with emotion down there in the court. The senior captain fouling out of her final high school game. It's a tough foul to call for her, but they have to get into the one and one because it, once you're behind, if you're not, if you have too few team fouls, you can't get the ball back. You have to foul right. and hope they miss. But Sampson's not the girl to foul. And now Hopkinton will have to do this last minute and a half without one of their most important players in Regan Caveney, who's getting consoled on the bench by teammates. Yeah, tough finish for her. She played a great game. She's had a great season, in particular the last uh, month or so, the playoffs carrying Hopkinton through. She will watch the final minute this and a half on the one. bench, this hoping her teammates here. can take this victory. Free yeah, throw, no throw. good. Ivy Goglin muscles through for that rebound. Hopkinton still only down three. Need a bucket here. And they got two more fouls to get to give the one and one. So if they score here, depending on if it's a two or a three, Corby open for three. Her shot, no good. Got a foul, got a foul. Same girl though. Hopkinton has had decent opportunities from deep past few possessions, none of them finding the mark. She missed the last one, but she looks like she's got too good of a stroke here. Yep, Sampson going up for one more at least. Got to hope she misses and box out. Boglin, a terrific rebounder. Got the last miss. We'll see what she can do here. But ha Sampson knocks down the first one. Four point lead now Two for possession Foxborough. game. Second free throw coming. Sampson up and in. Clutch free throws from the senior guard. 42 to 37 lead now for Foxborough. Hopkinton needs a bucket desperately. And Coach Greco calling a timeout. 101 left here in this fourth quarter. You don't have to take the three here, but um, you can't go three, you can't go for a two and then give up foul shots and keep it going four and five. You've got to get it back, back to where it's a one score a game. So a, right. a three would be very important and they could foul and Still one more one and one situation. But it can't be Sampson, she's too good. The last time I don't think they meant to foul Sampson, right, she yeah. got the rebound and you had to foul. Right, exactly. Two timeouts left for Hopkinton. Right, yeah, but using, uh, had three, just used that one from Coach Greco right there. Talking over the last the final minute here, and I don't know what exactly they started the uh, fourth quarter with for points, but Hopkinton again going cold. 32, I believe, because I think they scored five points in that 
that third quarter, and it, and it looked like they scored a bunch because they kept the lead. Right, right. So, But without a stats guy, we don't know what <laughs> <this is laughs> offensive, It's offensively a tough, tough half here for Hopkinton. Again, we mentioned before, only 10 points here in the half. And I'm not really sure that it was Foxborough's defense. I mean, they Hopkinton, Hopkinton did have a lot of open shots in the first half that they didn't get in the second half. Gogolin drives and a kind of ill-advised shot there. Nothing really she could have done there. Out of bounds off of Hopkinton. She got to the lane well, but then the, the end result was a kind of a forced shot. And Corby has forced a foul. Sampson again. And Sampson can feel it. Can feel this. You have to deny her the ball because she's too good of a foul shooter. This is the last one before double bonus. And she makes that three consecutive made free throws after missing one for Sampson. And that has increased the Foxborough lead to six with just under a minute left. Four in a row. Yeah, I think the miss was an aberration. Well, no one shoots 100%, right. so. But you can tell she's a good shooter. Prawl, the nice turnaround nice jumper. Now foul somebody else. See, now here I think they've got to deny Samson and, and foul someone else, because now it's two shots anyway. Right. You've got to go for the steal first. The bucket there from Prawl brings it to a five point deficit once again, 44 to 39. Now they can move the, the, the inbounder, can run the baseline, but I don't know if they know that or not. Maybe being talked over during the timeout here. Yeah, you want to get somebody in front of Samson and make them throw to somebody else, I think. And uh, while we have some time here before the end of the game, we want to thank uh, the HKM crew for allowing us to broadcast this one, in particular to Mr. Tom Dinks for making the journey out here for us. Um, the rest of the crew isn't here with us, but they they make it pretty uh, pretty painless to come and broadcast all these games. So I appreciate, and I'm sure I speak for Steve and my dad as well, for the effort that they put in to allow us to broadcast these games as Malika now that was interesting. Fouled. They had Samson, unless I looked up too late, they had Samson inbound inbound the pass, maybe to try to get it right back to her. But it's two shots now. And we've seen this five for Foxborough for the majority for the of the contest. Yes. Short on that free throw, but again, somehow Foxborough front rimming these shots, somehow gets that one to roll in. Now that you're behind, the, those uh, lucky bounces hurt they a little hurt, bit more. Yep, much more. That's short too. Short again, almost rolls in. Goglin with the rebound. So they still got it at two scores. So yep, as long as down they keep sixth. it there, they got to shoot. Yeah. But it's almost a turnover, but a foul called as Huynh had the ball stripped from behind. Still no shot though, which is actually a benefit for Hopkins because they really need a three with 37 seconds left. Bit of confusion there. Hiller thought they were inbounding under the hoop. At any rate, there's still it, oh, hopping the ball. Prawl oh. and a travel call. She knocked down the three. That's that new travel that they're calling. I'm not sure that was. I'm not sure that that was good defense right there. Good rejecting deny. Sampson, but, but the ball foul? gets in. Now Malika, she will be fouled. And a chance to put it up to eight, an eight point lead for Foxborough with Malika at the line shooting two. Sometimes the refs, they call the, they, they don't call the foul when you think you're, you foul them when it gets in this right. automatic foul position. That's gonna make it a pretty tough uh, hole to climb out of, three scores. Malika goes down very low on her free throw dribble, but makes both there. 47-39, under 30 seconds now. Corby thought about the three, gives it up to Hubner. 
You gotta Someone's got to shoot it. Prawl steps back. She's blocked. And now Hopkinton scrambling and a turnover. Stolen away by Sampson and a foul. And that really should do it here. Sampson going to the line for two more free throws. And I'll do my best to try not to sound too disappointed. But a tough break after that first half we saw here for Hopkinton. It looked like they were the better team. A tale of two halves. They're going to take Ivy Goglin out to let her get a standing ovation from her fans. Class move by the coach. And Sampson knocks it down, and Elizabeth Liberta, the senior, is coming oh, in. Not I guess for they didn't Goglin. take her out. Okay, I thought they would have. Looks like you're just getting the last senior out on the court for this one. And a second free throw, no good. All that remains is to the dribble score. out the rest of this clock as Hubner gets the nice late man. bucket. And a timeout called by Coach Greco. A bit confused as to that one, but. Well, maybe he, I'm not sure. He can't do much with nine seconds, but. Could have used that one earlier, but. You want to play to the end, though. You don't want to give up. But again, this, this Hopkinton Hiller team, uh, I broadcasted the game they lost in the sectional final last year. That was a disappointing, disappointing end to the season with a great senior class that left. And they, they fought back against that with that motivation, with that taste in their mouths and got to the state championship game this year with a great core of sen uh, seniors and juniors. And it looks like they're having fun out there now. They, they realize the game is, is over with nine seconds left. It's, it's almost impossible to, to score eight points to win. But they're hanging in there till the end. Rough second half, though. And Prawl fouls Malika on the inbound. And now a fresh. All five are coming out. Yep. They're going to give The rest them. of the bench players getting some time on the court. It's also a good move to get the uh, last ovation for the seniors. Malika knocks down the first. The first time she didn't hit the rim. And there and it is, the last There is last the ovation time. for the Hopkinton seniors who have had a very successful four years here. A lot of wins, TVL championships, deep postseason runs, and they deserve all the applause that they're getting here today. I'm sure they would have liked a different outcome here in this one, but great effort from everyone on the team and the coaching staff. Good effort. Foxborough just looked a little bit stronger in that second half. And that'll do it here as Sykes dribbles out the last three seconds. And Foxborough is your MIAA Division II state champion. Congratulations to the Foxborough Warriors who take the rubber match with Hopkinton after trading the first two games. Taking this one in the final 49-41 over your Hopkinton Hillers, who end the season at 21 and five, had won 12 in a row before this contest, but fall here to Foxborough by eight. And again, Jeff, you were saying a, a tough, tough break for these Hillers. Tough second half. Tough second, yes, exactly. I mean, it, it, was, it was really two different basketball games, and it's hard to figure out if, if Foxborough just was that much better in the second half, or if uh, Hopkinton wore down. They didn't have the same spunk they had for sure, but they figured out how to cover the, the two bigs down underneath because I don't think they got very many points in the second half. And again, while we have some time left, I want to give a shout out to all the seniors on the hop with the team. Ivy Goglin, Callie Corby, uh, Kate Hubner, Marissa Prawl, Elizabeth Liberta, Regan Caveney in their final game for the Hopkinton Hillers. Again, a great, great four years for these guys, and it's going to be tough for Hopkins to, re to recover from losing all that talent, though they've done it before. They did it last year, I'm sure. Coach Greco, they got a great program down there in Hopkinton. A lot of kids to choose from. I'm sure they'll be back in a similar position 
coming up next year. Well, the thing you need to look at is 11s and 10s on here to see how many they have coming back. Yeah, they are losing a lot of seniors. Um, but, but that's what happens in we'll college, come back next year. college and high school. It's, uh, it depends on where you are. How many juniors do you have? How many sophomores that are playing that you, you have? Can you balance it? And hopefully you don't have too much of a turnover. But here. i, I got to yeah. give a shout out to uh, Pat O'Brien from my golf league. I can see Pat down there now. Assistant coach Pat O'Brien. Assistant coach Pat O'Brien. And again here. We're going to wrap things up. Again, one last thank you to the HKM TV and crew. A thank you to the Hopkinton fans who showed out in force here today and all season. And for Steve Spector and Jeff Halatic, <laughs> I am Tim Halatic here signing off here as the Hillers fall 41 to 49 here in the state title game. 49 41. 49 41, excuse me, to Foxburg. Thank you guys for listening for today and all season. We hope to hear you next time. Thank you, Tim. It was fun. <laughs>